homemakers, welcome back. So today's video is going to be one that has been very highly requested and that is a two under two Q&A. Just to give you guys a backstory, I have one son who is three, a daughter who is 18 months. So they are 18 months apart and just to give you a little bit of perspective, I got pregnant when Marcus was only 10 months old and still nursed him for two months while being pregnant at the same time. And because I have always filmed YouTube videos throughout the last year and a half, I've been getting so many questions from mamas who are either in the midst of having two under two or who are expectant mamas who are going to have two kids under two and that are panicking and I just feel like this video has been a long time coming and it's something that I really want to create because yes having two under two is something that is really difficult and hard but it doesn't have to be bad. So I asked you guys over on Instagram a few days ago to send me your questions to just kind of help jog my memory and bring me back to that season in my life and I was just blown away by all the responses responses and feedback you guys gave me, so I'm gonna actually be making two videos. Today's video is going to be a Q&A focusing on the questions that you guys had about having two under two, and also filled with advice and wisdom from mamas who've already gone through it. And then later on, I'm going to make a video sharing a little bit more about my experience, and then my top 10 tips on having two under two, and the things that personally helped me the very most. Really quick, before we dive into this video, there's a couple things I want to talk about. The first thing being my headboard. A lot of you noticed in my last sit down video that I just recently got this headboard and saying that you loved it and wondering where I got it from and it's one that I've been wanting on Wayfair for probably over a year. It's been a really long time. I just never bought it, never bought it. And then on Labor Day, it went on sale for 20% off and I didn't buy it. And then it went even further on sale. And at that time, I just decided to snag it because it was a really good price. And I love it. It is not real velvet, but it looks like it and I really love it. <laughs> it's funny because I promised Daniel when we were married that I would make a headboard and we didn't need to buy one and now it's been almost six years and I finally just ended up buying a headboard. But anyways, the other thing I wanted to say is if you guys are new here, welcome. My name is Justine and on my channel I'm all about joyful motherhood, natural living, and an orderly and peaceful home and I'd love to have you as a subscriber to my channel so make sure you hit that red subscribe button and leave me a comment down below introducing yourself because I love to get to know you guys a little bit better. If you're not new, please give this video a like and especially if you want to see more like this on my channel because this is the only way YouTube knows to keep recommending videos and I know that you guys really like them and that thumbs up button really helps my channel do better and my videos do better on YouTube so I would really appreciate if you guys would just take one second right away and hit the like button. There's so many of you who always do that for me and I really appreciate you guys. Okay so I asked all of these questions over on Instagram and then also on my community tab on YouTube. If you guys don't already follow me over on Instagram my username is at JustineMarie55 and over there I try to go live with you guys at least every couple weeks because I feel like in real time we get to know each other a little bit better. I love talking with you guys over there because it's more on a daily basis. Like I said, Marcus and Chloe are almost exactly 18 months apart. So for six months, I did the whole two under two thing. And I am not going to lie to any of you. It is pretty much the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But it was also the most rewarding and beautiful season of my life of just a period of me growing and learning to rely on God and ugh, just such a sweet, special season of motherhood also. And while that first six months was really difficult, after that has just gotten easier and easier and easier. And now that the kids are a little older, they're they're playmates and they're they're pretty much the same age and they entertain each other and, and they're interested in the same things. And I would not trade that closeness that they have for anything. It is just so much fun and I think it is a lot easier in some ways as well. So starting with the first question, Alex Ville 3 says, did you have a routine that helped you? If so, what was it like? At first, I did not have a routine. It was kind of just more about being as simple, simple as I could. And then as I got used to having two, because it feels overwhelming at first, I definitely think you need to give yourself time, a few weeks maybe, to get used to taking care of two babies. Because two under two pretty much is two babies. They're both in diapers. They both have to be watched so closely. So giving yourself some time to adapt and grow as a mother is really, really important. So I didn't get into a routine right away, but definitely later on getting into a routine helped the kids. It was really good for them, but also the structure helped me a lot. I'm, and I made a couple morning routines during that time, which I'll have those linked down below. And 
Something I like to say about those morning routines though is that they are kind of a picture of my routine. They don't show like the blowouts that happen and um, the baby crying crying that might happen. They're just more an illustration of my routine that I established. So if you're looking for more of like a real life how I handle situations, watch some of my vlogs. I'll have a couple of those linked down below as well. Vivu Lisp said, how did you handle postpartum depression with 2 under 2 if both are c-section and is it safe? I didn't ever get into fl f a full-blown postpartum depression, but I did have some pretty good lows where I really just felt inadequate and just not enough as a mom because it was so overwhelming at times, especially if like I would lose my patience with Marcus and Chloe would be crying and just and just the exhaustion of having a newborn just left me feeling um, just really so inadequate and just feeling like I couldn't do it all and I wasn't enough and I wasn't the right person for these children because I I just wasn't enough as a mom. And I never contemplated suicide, but in those moments I understood why sometimes moms in their life when they really are in that deep place of postpartum depression, which if you are or you know anyone that is, like, make sure you seek help. I was never dwelling on that and I never felt suicidal thoughts, I just understood how a mom could get to that place. And honestly, I think the biggest thing that helped me during that season was that I was getting into the Word every morning, and if the morning time didn't happen, like Chloe would wake up with me a lot of the time, I would just read whenever I could. I'd turn on a TV or I'd give Marcus a toy and just hold Chloe in my lap or nurse her so I could just have a few moments to pray and read the Bible. That and going to a women's Bible study at my church where there was childcare provided, if I could at least just get myself to pack the kids and head out to church on time, once I got there I could just just relax and just be with women who were encouraging and listen to the word. I would baby wear Chloe, but Marcus would be in class. It was just a really relaxing time for me where I got filled so much. So I think those two things alone really sustained me through the whole process. That and I feel like when we go through the hardest seasons in life, that's when we hear God speak to us the most. And I had some pretty amazing moments with the Lord during, and I get emotional whenever I talk about spiritual stuff. Um, So I had some pretty amazing um, moments with the Lord during that season too. So I would have to say that the Lord is the one who really carried me through all of that and also having supportive women around you who you can talk to. If you don't have that, then I would encourage you to find a church where you can find a community and make some mommy friends because the Bible and that is just really where it's at. Um, Social Nomad says, does your husband help with a lot with the kids besides just watching them? And the answer to that is no because we, I don't know how many of you know the backstory, but Daniel has had, we were kind of forced into a position where it was like, our family needed to just figure out a way to make money and so he started a business flipping mobile homes and doing renovations and during that season he was working 60 to 80 hours a week so I felt like a single mom a lot of the time on top of all of that so the answer to that is no I was primary caregiver most all hours of the day and night because he was so busy with work and because the livelihood of our family was dependent on him making this business successful which the whole stress of that made it really difficult as well. She also asked, how do you manage frustration and stress? Um, in those times, I just learned to keep it simple and just let things go. And if it got to a point where I was just having a bad day, um, it was so much better to just like let the dishes be in the sink and let the house be dirty, you know, and just sit there with the kids or just turn on a movie because that's going to damage my child less than me yelling at him will. And one thing also that I did was I wrote a verse on the mirror in my living room to um, just, I think it was the one that says uh, that the Lord will give you strength. I'll try to find which verse it was exactly, I don't remember. It was just one uh, reminding me to draw my strength from the Lord in those situations and it really helped me a lot. Antonita Boz says, did you prepare freezer meals for baby two, breakfast, lunch, and dinners? Um, no, I didn't. I was very lucky enough to have friends that did a meal train for us. I think it was every other night for like two weeks, which was amazing. Um, so that was really nice. Uh, but other than that, I kind of just made things as simple as I could. When we grocery shopped at Costco, I would just buy um, veggies in bulk and meats in bulk and just dice them, put them on a cookie sheet, making make a little sauce, maybe some rice, 
and we would just eat very, very simply prepared dinners. Um, and breakfast would be like yogurt and granola and just very simple stuff. It took me a while to get back into cooking and back into meal planning and ho homemaking and all that. So if you, all you can do is keep your babies alive, that's okay. Like it's just a season. You'll get into the swing of things. Don't worry too much about the house. Just plan to keep things simple. Audrey Suzanne asked about how to go out in the early days. I would definitely say bring a mom or a sister or someone who doesn't have kids with you. It took me, I don't remember how long it was before I actually ventured out, but I know that they were both quite young and my advice for that would be to plan only one outing. I think a huge mistake is that we mamas get feel so trapped at home all the time that when we finally do get the kids into the car and we're ready to go out, we want to run every errand that's been on our list for a really long time. And that's exhausting for us, but also our kids cannot handle that at that age. And it's just a recipe for disaster. So I would say just like pick the one most important store that you need to go to. For me, that was to get groceries once a week at Trader Joe's. And the way I would do that is I would just get Chloe out of the car first, drop her to me, and then walk Marcus to the door and immediately put him in the cart and make sure to have snacks for them. And at the end of the trip, if they were getting a little bit squirmy, I would hand Marcus a cartoon on my phone. And honestly, I had so many good experiences. There were some you know, bad experiences, but I had so many good experiences doing it that way. Also, Trader Joe's is such a small store that you can get in and out in like 30 minutes, and I was able to keep my sanity, and the kids were able to just be happy during that amount of time, um, so it was just perfect for us. Um, so yeah, I would say don't try to overachieve. Keep it simple. Be realistic when you're thinking of what you and your children can handle, um, and go do that, and I think with anything, practice makes perfect the more often you get out the easier it will become, the more confident you will become, and the more often you'll have good experiences with it. And when, and if all else fails, just bring your mom or go shopping in the evening when your husband can come with you. Mrs. V. Rosado says, how do you make time for your spouse? I am so bad about this. Um, so back in those days, like I said, Daniel was working 60 to 80 hours a week. I was, you know, I felt like a single mom at the time. So honestly, I think we were both so tired. It was a season where it wasn't a hard season on marriage, but it was a hard season to feel connected to each other. We were kind of both just in survival mode. Um, so the answer to that would be let him fit for himself. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but really that's kind of just what happened. Um, I'm really blessed because Daniel is fine like eating cereal for dinner and he's fine grabbing cereal. He would eat cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I think he probably has at times. Anyway, so I'm just really blessed in that way. I would say things definitely got a little bit better when we started initiating um, date nights every two or three weeks. We were, we're still really bad at having them regularly, but um, date nights definitely help, which get expensive when you have to hire a babysitter. So if you have a mom or a sister or an aunt who can watch your babies, that would be great. So I don't think I'm the best person to, to tell you how to find time for your husband because I think we both understood that it was a season. I think we both relied very heavily on each other to fulfill the roles that we each had. Yeah, so honestly, other than that, praying for your spouse and praying for a connection and stuff like that, I don't really have that much advice because it was a really difficult season and that's how we had to get our family through those hard months. I would say scheduling out times where you really can catch up with each other and like not talk about business or children, but about your relationship and how you want to handle things as a family to spend quality time that will last through those harder seasons. Um, also letting your husband dream and listening to those dreams I think is a really important key as well because if he feels listened to, he feels connected even when you might not have a lot of time to spend on him, if that makes sense. Mrs. Majelukaj Sorry, I totally just butchered that name. I'm sorry. How to keep up with the mess and spend quality time with both kids. It's really hard to keep up with the mess. Um, I think, first of all, like, the mess is really, it's not important. Like, 10 years from now, you're not going to be like, I'm so glad that I cleaned that house that one day, even though the kids were crying. No. I think what we're going to look back on is that we soaked up every minute of having a newborn and a cute little baby that we possibly could, that we um, snuggled with them and let the dishes just stay in the sink. I think those are the days that I'm going to be the most happy about and have the least regrets about. So if the house is a mess, it's okay. 
I was, I, like I always say, I'm about an orderly and peaceful home, not a perfect home. And if my family is happy, I have hit my goal and it doesn't really matter if there's mess. But to really answer that question, I would say having a routine definitely helps. And to have a couple set times in the day, like maybe right before nap time and then right before bedtime to tidy up toys and stuff is a really good thing. And the way I would spend time with both kids is Chloe wanted to be held 24 seven in those early days, which was really difficult. So a lot of the time I was baby wearing her. I think playing with your toddler and making sure he still feels loved and like your baby is really important. I'm lucky because Marcus is still a super cuddly little boy. So let, giving him a bottle of milk, having him on my lap and reading to him um, when Chloe was napping were really important moments for him and also taking some time out of the day to play with him But I think the thing that made him feel the most loved during that time was when I treated him exactly like I treated Chloe So like I said, sometimes I would give him bottles and rock him and then other times I would just tickle him and kiss him and squish him like I would to Chloe Even though he was getting a little old for that and I think that really made him feel like he was still loved and cared for and that he was still mommy's baby So those are the questions that I have over on Instagram and now I'm gonna go to the YouTube community. Okay, so inner fiefdom says, was there any jealousy? If so, how did you handle or prepare for it? Did he ever feel abandoned, neglected, or like he didn't get enough attention? Um, which I kind of just answered that. She says, I want to try for a second baby next year, but worry I won't have enough time for my oldest during the newborn months. For reference, my little one is now three months old. To answer the first part of your question, yes, he was very jealous of Chloe, but I was so lucky that it didn't come in, out in him being mean to Chloe. He actually adored adored her. He loved her so, so much, which was just wonderful to watch. Um, but he took it out in bad behavior. So he was more um, stubborn and would throw a little bit more fits. Um, and it was all attention seeking. So just making sure to give them some quality attention when baby is napping, um, I think that is going to be really, really important. Um, she also asked, what are the sleeping arrangements? I noticed they currently share a room and wanted to know how you started out and the timeline that built built up to that. Do you plan on them eventually having their own rooms and if so, when? Both of our kids slept in our room for the first six months of their life. They We actually had a bassinet right next to my side of the bed and then after six months old we we would roll them out into the hallway because they would start sleeping through the night a lot better that way and then when Chloe was one we transferred her to that bedroom because it was really hard to sneak out the door like when Daniel was going to work and not wake her. So we really just needed the kids to sleep in longer so that we actually had time to connect as, you know, as a couple and I would have time to get ready for the day and, and do some morning chores, have some quiet time. That, so that's why we transferred her into the room. And honestly, it was a really good experience. She's not that great as a sleeper. So we sleep trained her in the hallway first and then I I think, I want to say that we had Marcus sleep in our bed a few nights and she was alone in that room a few nights before we transitioned them both in the room together. Or it may have been that she just did really well and we let her cry it out because Marcus is like, he sleeps like a log. So he would sleep through some things. Yes, she did cry it out for about five to ten minutes for two or three nights in a row. And after that, she kind of got the point. Yeah, she never cried more than 10 minutes. She was really great. I think ever since then, they've been sleeping together. Every now and then, one will wake up and start crying and we have to go like, you know, calm them down. But they pretty much sleep there really well together. It's been a really great experience. We're lucky that way. Um, and the answer to when will they ever have their own room, they are doing really great right now sharing and I also think it's nice um, because they'll learn to sleep through more things, they'll learn to share more things, um, but definitely as they get older and they need privacy from each other because they are a boy and a girl, um, it, when we have a house that allows that, we will give them their own rooms. Um, question number three, how much di help did you have? My husband and I just moved out of state and my parents are no longer driving distance away. Do you think it's possible to do 202 without family, grandma, and support? Thank you so much for sharing your life and tips. So that's also a question I kind of just answered. My mom was around, but she herself had a full-time job, so it's not like she could help me just whenever I needed the help. And my sister had a baby of her own. So I would say it is doable, but it's going to be difficult, but you are equipped for it. And like I said, finding a church with women who can encourage you in the Lord and in motherhood will be so important. Um, I was lucky enough to have that. And also getting inspired and motivated from other mamas who have 
it harder than you do. I have a friend who had her sons, um, I think they're like, a year exactly apart and then she had she was pregnant with another baby when I was pregnant with Chloe putting it in perspective that it could be harder and also seeing her handle more than I was really helped me a lot as well so yeah that is a really hard road give yourself grace and you will adapt and build confidence and there will be hard days but the Lord is there to strengthen you to forgive you when you mess up and if you need help like your husband is there and God has placed him, him there to be your biggest support and your best encourager and sometimes they don't always get that or know how to comfort you so it's really important that we express that and articulate that to our husbands because I know Daniel is someone who is willing to help me but sometimes he just doesn't know how so if I can give him a tangible way then he is very happy to do that. Also getting out for a little mommy time every once in a while does amazing things for your mental well-being. Um, sometimes Daniel would watch the kids so that I could just go out for one or two hours, which was doable for him with a newborn and toddler. Um, and I got a pedicure and a manicure once, which it doesn't have to be stuff like this. Sometimes I would just go to Target or whatever, but having that one hour as like a recharge just totally refreshes you and just get, makes you a whole, it made me a whole new person just ready to get back to my kids and dive into motherhood again. So I really encourage scheduling a little time out like that as well. Luca Bell or Lisa says, with two kids, how did you find time to spend with your husband? I know if I, for me, I put wife on the back burner and just stay in mom mode or sleep mode. Like I said, I feel like we really kind of aren't the best stellar examples of that because we kind of miss each other in that season, but we knew it was just a season and we got through it and now we're more... Um, we're very connected as a couple. We have re-established um, having a morning quiet time together, which we kind of have slacked off on recently, but most of the time we do have a morning quiet time together. We both get up before our children do, but then we also put them down an hour before we do, so we have that time to do whatever we want. Sometimes we'll go on a date night at that time if we have my mom or a sitter, but one of my favorite things that we did, I just got the kids ready for bed. Daniel went and bought a tub of ice cream, and we brought the TV to our dresser, and we just sat on our bed eating ice ice cream watching a movie which is very inexpensive but it was really fun and it felt kind of like we were back into that mode of like marriage before kids um so it was a really fun experience until Marcus woke up and ruined everything and then he joined us on the bed <laughs> yeah I think making sure that you have scheduled time without kids is super important and like I said not talking about kids not talking about work talking about spiritual things um about what you're going through right now about your relationship and your marriage I know for me as a wife sometimes I have to stop talking about the kids or stop Daniel talking about business and say I need as a wife, I need to talk about us. I need to talk about our marriage. And that can't happen without scheduling time for each other without the kids around. Fairhot Mahmood, mom, yes. Sorry if I butchered your name. I'd love to know if you're sleep trained or not. And if so, did you sleep train baby too without disturbing the older child? So I kind of already answered that. We kind of sleep trained her away from Marcus and then put them both in the room together. Um, the method I used was a really amazing one for both of my kids. It took, it was really great for Marcus, like worked right away. Took a little bit more trial and error with Chloe, but I like to just refer people to the video that I watched and got inspired by um, from Elle Lindquist. If I can find it, I'll link it down below for you guys because that video she put together is just so useful and so good. Um, maybe not everything is going to work out for everybody, but I highly recommend starting there because it's just so good. Gabriella Castaneda says, how do you manage to get things done, get time for yourself, and have time for baby boy? Having a routine now is really helping. The kids know that once breakfast is done, it is their time to go into the living room and play with toys on their own while I do my morning chore, clean up after breakfast and stuff. It doesn't always work perfectly. Sometimes I have to remind them over and over and over again and even sometimes they both help me unload the dishwasher. A lot of times Chloe does. So that's how I do things now, but in the early days I kind of just prioritize them rather than keeping the house clean. So there were some nights where I would just have a house, messy house at the end of the day and tons of dishes in the sink and a lot of times Daniel would do them for me or my mom would and later on I was able to start keeping up with the house housework as they got older. Okay, so Fazila Salim says, how did you manage them both at the same time with a cute smile? Every time I play with my children, how did I find time for me? Um, she has a baby girl. She's fed up. 
and now my my videos encourage her. So I kind of touched on this with the morning quiet time, um, which wasn't always in the morning. Fitting it in wherever you can in the day, that is the most important me time that you could make for yourself. And also having one hour away for a week was also amazing. A lot of people say to sleep when your baby sleeps, and that is something that can make us all feel like functional human beings. So I think it is really wise to sleep when your baby sleeps. I never did that because I was doing YouTube at the time. So I think the Lord sleeping and taking some time out for yourself where you can rest and relax um, will help you be the best mama you can be and keep going. Monica Carter says, this is my current situation. How do you get life done? LOL. I am barely getting anything done with a two week old and a 20 month month old. Yes, I hear you. That's how it's going to be for a little while and that's okay. It really is okay. One thing I started doing was to kind of have like a corral for the kids like live life just in our living room I had everything I needed there and had the changing pad out there the kids toys out there and as long as we were in that living room that area the rest of the house stayed clean and it was so much easier to just clean up one room versus the whole house um, so that's one thing that helped me keep on top of things um, but yeah I think just giving yourself grace and understanding that for a little while your house is going to be messy also one thing I did is when I really felt overwhelmed with the mess that's when Daniel would jump in. Rachel B says, I'm pregnant with my second and my first is 18 months old. Will I ever shower or sleep again? Yes, you will. She says, just kidding. I honestly want to know how to run errands with two little kids or does the newborn wake up the older kid? So her first question, running errands with two little kids. So I already answered that by saying I would take pick one errand and only do that one for that day um, by strapping Chloe to the front of me first and then putting Marcus in the cart and buckling him in so that he could not go anywhere. Um, having their favorite toy is important, having some snacks, and also I was always terrified that Chloe would just like start screaming while we were in the store. She never did that, so I think sometimes we trick ourselves into thinking it's going to be worse than it really is, um, and so we are too scared to even try. But I think the more often you do it, the more confident you will become, and when bad experiences like that happen, it will be just every once in a while, and you'll know that for the most part, you can handle anything that they dish out. Is that Aguirre ask how did you lose weight after pregnancy I have a full video explaining that so I'll link that down below for you um, Megan Jane says how did you do your night routine with a baby and toddler thanks so much for this my two are 18 months apart with my baby being nine week old congratulations um, so I'm really looking forward to this I feel like I have a hundred questions well hopefully you got a lot of them answered already in this video um, I will link my night routine down below but like I said this is a picture of the routine it wasn't always smooth and it wasn't always perfect. And Evo Bliss says, I will, I would like to know more how you kept Marcus entertained while taking care of your little girl. My girls are three months and two and a half. It's hard for me to keep my toddler busy without screen time. Uh, yes, I understand that one a lot. I feel so guilty for doing so. Any tips on potty training? Okay, I am like the worst person to ask about potty training right now because we are still going through it after six months. I've, I've already potty trained a little girl when I was a nanny, so I know that this is just a very difficult experience with it. Um, so when Marcus is fully potty trained, I do plan to make a how to potty train a very difficult, stubborn boy. <laughs> um, so keep an eye out for that video, but I'm not sure when it's gonna come out because like I said, we are still in the throes of it. Um, and also, how did I keep Marcus entertained? I totally understand the guilt of screen time. I try to pull out different toys at different times, and then on birthdays and Christmas, I would buy him toys that I knew would keep him entertained for a long time. Marcus is a very active, hands-on boy, and um, so I would get him a slightly older toys than he, for his age. So magnetiles were amazing. They kept him busy for a long time. The big Legos are amazing. Anything that he could build. So I would say look at your toddler and um, just watch him at other people's homes or in nursery what toys are the most interesting for them and then find ways that you can give that to them. Let's try to think of a way that you can make it different every day so that it's all totally new to him and exciting for him again. But sometimes if you have to turn on a screen for your sanity, don't feel guilty about that. Um, we only feel guilty about it when we feel like when we are doing it when we don't need it. But if you need it, 
that is okay. 20 minutes for mommy to get a breather or get dinner on the table is not gonna hurt anyone. Anu Maman says, how did you manage taking care of babies, cooking, and other chores when you were sick? Um, I was still like the whole being in the living room thing. Even now, I will still block off the kitchen and the area to my bedroom so that we have to stay in the kids' room and the living room and just stay in there. I lay on the couch. We do a lot of movies when I'm sick. That's a time where that rule of 20 minutes doesn't apply. If mommy's sick or the kids are sick, we do end up doing a lot of movie time. Just containing the mess and staying in one little area is really important. Um, in the early days when I when Chloe was only a few weeks old, and I was just so exhausted that I needed some time to sleep. I put Marcus in his playpen with some toys and turned on a movie. And then I laid on the sofa and slept with Chloe on my chest. And um, I was able to get a nap in at that time when I just really, really needed it. And I couldn't wait till their nap time. Um, and they were on opposite schedules at the time anyways. Um, a playpen is really, really nice to have because you can block off your baby or toddler and just keep them contained and in the same place. I think that really helps a lot because your toddler is not running through the house creating mess in every single room or getting into stuff where you can't see them. Um, so yeah, just keeping life in a smaller contained area is really helpful. Oh, Maha Mughal says, always love your videos. Love to see Marie. Thank you. Have no idea and no experience of motherhood because I'm not married yet. Would you love would love to listen to good advices from you on how to feed and what to feed according to baby's age. Again, I have a video on exactly that topic. I will link that down below. If there's any video that I mentioned in this that I forgot to link, please leave me a comment and I chances are I just forgot and I would be very happy to link it. Um, I'm expecting my seventh and I've had four kids under five and now we will have five kids under seven. It's hard, but it's fun. Yes, it is. I wow kudos to you that is so amazing and moms like this encourage me so much because i think if you can do it i can handle my two and it just it really empowers me as a mom to know that you can handle that like i and if i had that i could handle it like the lord equips us for what he gives us um tony hickson says i was there many years ago hun my hubby and i had our time when the kids were in bed i had two under two it was crazy busy i nursed but our oldest was a bit jealous so we each took her out alone to give her special time with us and it's also helped. That's great advice to have like little mommy son dates or little daddy daughter dates or you know whatever the case may be with the oldest child. That is such a good idea. That's something that I want to do more with Marcus now. Um, I feel like a lot of times we have that connection with our youngest because we're nursing them. We have like that mommy baby bond and I feel I felt kind of like Marcus and I disconnected and we didn't really have that and so finding things that Marcus and I could bond with like we would bond over building something together, over reading a story, um, just doing things that he liked to do. So just reconnecting and rebuilding that bond if you have a jealous soldier child is amazing too. Rebecca Kerr says, if you do church, how do you handle it? And I'm honestly, and honestly, just leaving the house in general, I'm so worried about having to run off after my toddler and what if I stop to nurse the baby, etc. Um, yes, we do church. Sometimes we didn't do Wednesday night services because it was past the kids' bedtime and Chloe would cry and cry and cry on the way home anyways. Um, so it was easier because we were always together when it was church. Um, so Daniel would take care of Marcus, I would take care of the baby and that was easy. Um, but as far as leaving the house in general, having a double stroller is key. I'll say that again. Get a double stroller. It will change your life. Um, because that way you can have the baby in the bassinet or you can strap baby to you. You have your hands free. You can have your bag under the stroller and your toddler can be stuck inside the stroller. Um, that is amazing. So you can go to doctor's appointments that way. You can go to people's houses that way. You can go just whatever you do the zoo wherever you go having a double troller double stroller is one of the most necessary and first things you should get when you're expecting two under two i will try to find the one that i have linked down below because it is one that we still use to this day because it can have two um like the car seat bat bassinets attached to it or two seats so and we use the two seats now um that one has been great and it's not an expensive fancy one it's just a really great one so i'll have that one linked down below if anyone's interested how did you handle them when they both cry or whine at the same time and how did you handle the jealousy of your number one there were times when I would just lose it and I would just yell at Marcus to stop and immediately after seeing his face I would feel horrible 
horrible about it and I would just go and apologize to him and tell him mommy sorry mommy's not gonna yell anymore um, and that's when I started writing the verses on my mirror to remind myself to draw strength from the Lord and a lot of times I noticed uh, when the crying was happening was when I was trying to do something for me, for myself. And a lot of the times it wasn't like the Lord really worked on my heart on that. Like seeing why was it so important to post that picture on Instagram now? Or why was it so important to respond to that text now? And just to lift my eyes from those things that don't matter to the things that are most important really helped put things in perspective because at the end of the day, I will feel so much better about myself if I spent all the time with my kids and I didn't lose my cool rather than I answered people who are texting me or posting a cute picture on Instagram. Like, like you have to let go of yourself in this season. Not completely. I think that we need to take care of ourselves enough so that we can care for them, but we have to die to ourselves a lot and just give up our desires for them. And the interesting thing is that when we do that, we are the most fulfilled as moms and we have the most peace. But there are gonna be times when they're both crying and you just have to accept that that's going to happen. It's normal and it's okay and it's not gonna last forever. I know like constant crying can get really, really frustrating. So maybe trying to shift the situation by having them both sit on your lap and reading a book or something like that where you can reestablish like the peace in your home. Also just like throwing up your hands and crying out to the Lord and saying, I cannot handle this. Like tell me what I need to do or give me the strength to get through this. Those moments of weakness are when God's power can really show up in our lives. And a Vogler says, did you breastfeed your son while you were pregnant with your daughter? Yes, for two months. If so, did he notice a difference in your milk? Okay, I've just been like so blessed that I've never had trouble with milk production, with nursing, nothing. I mean, I did like starting out, I always had like tenderness and stuff and I got mastitis, like pre-mastitis once, um, but was able to get rid of it. So I've just been really blessed. Never noticed a dip in my milk supply. I, I eat like a horse. I eat a ton. So I think that really contributes to like keeping my milk supply up because I am still nursing Chloe to this day. I think I mentioned that she was 18 months uh, at the beginning of the video, a year and a half, but she's actually, I haven't added it up for a while. She's a little bit older than that. She is 21 months old now and she's still nursing not showing any signs of stopping but um, so she only nurses like once in the morning and I just eat a full and plentiful diet and I don't cut calories or anything I just think I'm just really naturally blessed in that way and when Marcus was 10 months and I got pregnant um, by that point he was only nursing once in the morning and once at night and then when he was 11 months it was just once in the morning and then when he was one, he kind of just got done and that's just how we ended. It was really easy. Um, Sabrina Lee says, I would love to know if they share a room and yes, they do. And if so, did you transition the baby into your toddler's room? I have a three month old and a 22 month old and I can say that the most nervous about. I don't want the baby to wake up my toddler, but he may have limited space for now. Also, what age did you put baby in her own room? So I think I'm not going to go into that because I think I answered every single one of those questions. If I didn't, leave me a comment down below and I'll go back to that. So now we've gotten through all the questions and there were so many of them. I might have to split this into two videos because that's a lot. Anyway, so I'm going to go back to all of the advice from the mamas who have had two under two. And I'm really excited about this one because some of you I know personally and I I'm so glad that you left me a comment. Thank you so much. And I think even just hearing it helped me feel like some of the things I went through was validated and I was really encouraged by it. So there's good advice here for everyone, even if you don't have two under two. Um, Jessica Martinez says, I survived two under two. They are now nine to nine and 10, boy and girl, and I'm so glad it happened that way. Don't get me wrong. It was hard sometimes and I wouldn't change it. Enjoy it. They grow up so fast. Okay, so our Everyday Victories is one of my favorite mamas on YouTube and Instagram. Um, she says, over prepare. And that is such a good idea. Um, what I loved to do to prepare myself was watching other mamas on YouTube. I would binge watch everything that had to do with a baby and by the time I was in it, it felt like it came pretty naturally to me and I would recall all of that information that I had watched really easily when I was in the situation. So it just, so yeah, I think over preparing, just like trying to learn everything you can is such good advice. Thank you, Emily. So this is from my friend Miranda. She actually left three, four comments. 
she is the one who has two sons who are exactly a year apart and then the daughter who is I think she's like a year and a half younger so she had three under three for several months so I was really excited to hear from her she says it's okay to stay home and say no it's an overwhelming time but it gets way easier um, she says go to your in-laws or parents for dinner don't be ashamed of a dirty house no one is judging I love that I totally invited myself to my aunt's house for dinner once and my sisters and there were times when I asked my mom if she could cook for us too she also says go to the park or outside you don't need to do everything and it's okay to ask for help I would say lean on the Lord, find mom groups and Bible studies, reach out to others. I think that is such an important one because I feel like a lot of the time we um, we draw into ourselves and feel like we're the only one and alone and that no one is reaching out to us. So I think that's really great advice to reach out to others um, because sometimes we have to be the ones to make the first move. My friend Paula, Meet Me in Christ, says it's all about mindset. They can be annoying, stressful, or funny, or rewarding. You decide. That's so so true too. Sometimes they will get together and make the hugest mess, but when I look at their cute little faces that they have no idea how much trouble they just caused me, like my heart just melts and I just just think that they're adorable and they're so cute. Um, when butterflies grow says give yourself grace. Agree with that 100%. Lisa says don't take it too personal when they misbehave. They still can't fully control emotions. So true. That's one that I always forget. So thank you so much for that reminder even though I'm not at two under two anymore. Hannah says don't be hard on yourself. Enjoy these moments. You'll really miss them one day. It's so true. Even though my kids are still young, I really miss the newborn stage of both of them. Those two pictures back there are both when Marcus was three weeks and Chloe was three months and just seeing that a lot of times will bring tears to my eyes because it is a season that goes way too fast. M. Strusel left a few comments and said, lower your expectations of what you can accomplish in a day. Just like I said with going to one store, running one errand, and that is it because that's all you can handle. Um, so true. Good advice. Um, remember that loving on two little humans is all that matters. Perspective. Um, also, she says all the hard things are just stages and that will quickly change. That is such great advice. You guys, thank you so much for everyone who sent in that wisdom. Um, that is so encouraging to hear even in the stage that I'm in. Um, and also thank you to everyone for sending in questions. I really hope that you guys got uplifted and encouraged and also feel more peace and less panic knowing that so many women have gone through it as well and that you are fully equipped and created to handle all of it and that God will always be there to provide the resources and the help that you need. If you have any more questions, please feel free to leave them in a comment down below. I'd love to also have you be a subscriber if you're not already and give this video a thumbs up because it is quite different than what I usually do on my channel, but it's something that I really felt on my heart um, to make this for you guys because I remember being in that place of like not knowing what it be, would be like and um, also while I was in it just kind of struggling with it too. So I hope that you leave this video feeling more peace and um, just encouraged in the Lord and in motherhood and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.